Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Getting Out of Bed with Micah, where I take you along with me in my journey as I grow in discipline through getting up in the morning early and starting my day off in a productive, successful way. Um, so today is Saturday. Um, I went with trying to get up about 8 today. I got up about 8.15, so not too bad. Um, today, uh, I got to, um, I've got a housewarming party later today, um, kind of like midday. So, uh, I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to chill this morning. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, do my normal thing, get my smoothie going and, you know, get my Bible read and everything because, you know, that's super important. Um, and then probably shortly after all that, I'm going to have to, you know, get my shower and start getting ready and get ready to roll on. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rolling on the smoothie and I'll uh, tune back in after I've uh, completed uh, my morning things. So, uh, yeah. It has finally happened. Using the expert advice of uh, Lizzo left in the comments, um, uh, I have successfully made my smoothie. Just one cup and nothing left. We have done it. I am proud. <laughs> All right, I have finished my smoothie and my reading. Um, I had to make my smoothie with water today because I ran out of milk yesterday and didn't get any because um, I forgot. <laughs> and then last night it was late and I could have gotten some 7-Eleven, really didn't feel like it. Uh, so I made it with water. Um, definitely not as much of a fan of the water deal. Um, it was definitely easier for blending because uh, it wasn't as thick. It, it moved easier in the blender, but... Um, Definitely didn't enjoy it as much. So, you know, it's what it is, though. It was still fine. It was still fine. Um, but for my reading today, what really jumped out at me is reading in Acts um, chapter 8. Right there in the beginning, it talks about, you know, basically war breaks out against, you know, the church in Jerusalem and everything. And so, you know, the Christians kind of scatter and they go out to different cities and everything. You know, and side note, it always amuses me, you know, because, you know, this is basically Satan working against, you know, the body of Christ to try and destroy it. And what ends up happening is that they spread out and start preaching Jesus everywhere else as well, even more so than they already were, and um, end up taking over the world for Jesus. So, you know, um, anyway, that was a side note, it amuses me. Um, but so what really jumped out at me, though, is Philip goes to Samaria, and, you know, he shows up, and he's teaching Jesus, and he's healing people, and he's casting out demons and everything, and they have this sorcerer, Simon, who, you know, have been wowing the people with, you know, his sorcerer powers and everything that were definitely from Satan. And um, all of a sudden, everybody's attention shifts from him to Philip. And then his attention even shifts from himself to Philip and then to Jesus because he is so amazed by the power that is working through Philip. And so this really challenges me to look at my own life and to be reminded that my life is supposed to look like Jesus's who went around healing everybody, casting out demons and grabbing people's attention with the power of God on display, the love of God on display on this earth, you know, just draws people's attention. And then we're able to preach, you know, Jesus and share the love of God with them in an even deeper way and, and bring them to salvation. And that's what happened here with Philip. He came out the gate, healing people, casting out demons, and say grab people's attention because the love of God on display will always grab people's attention. And after their needs were met, then he was able to speak to them of their need for salvation. And, you know, basically the whole town gets saved. Um, the whole place is, you know, revolutionized with Jesus. Um, and even this sorcerer who, you know, was the guy and was all caught up in himself, all of a sudden his entire, you know, life shifts and he's about Jesus. Yeah, he has things that he hits and he still deals with his selfishness and, you know, blah, 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 you know, as you read on. But it's just cool to me how this plays out and then it challenges me to really take a look at my own life and see how well am I doing this. Because, you know, to be honest, I'm still scared to pray for people most of the time. <laughs> You know, like the, the idea of like, oh, this person's sick. I should pray for them because that's what Jesus did. Jesus healed the sick, you know, um, still scares me a bit, you know, it's still outside of my comfort zone. And so this challenges me to grow. And that's what the word's about. You know, the word is about encouragement, about, you know, setting your standard of truth and challenging you to grow and to be more like who Jesus is. And so um, awesome word time this morning. Always love getting to spend time with Jesus, you know, reading the word and everything. 
Um, but yeah, so that'll be it for this morning. Um, gotta get rolling on this, uh, getting ready for this house party, uh, housewarming party <laughs> and everything. Um, and so yeah, that's it for getting out of bed with Micah today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, be sure to let me know what you think in the comments and always remember that you are important, that you are valuable, that you matter, that Jesus loves you and so do I, and I'll see you next time. Toodaloo. Bye.